They were ready to go. OSC still very much in the rebuilding stage. The Catalan Dragons very much looking at a return to Old Trafford and a grand final and to go one better after two defeats at Old Trafford in the last three years. Here's Arik Da Costa still deputising for uh, Mickey McLaurin, who is still suspended. This is the last of his three-game suspension, but it's going to be tough up front for sure in these early stages. It's a big test, isn't it, for Old FC? They just about got over London last weekend, and you could argue that London should have and could have won that game were it not for Morgan Smith, as you mentioned. But a real difficult task to face Catalan after a loss at home in front of this crowd. They're going to have to get a lot of facets of the game. Well, right. here's McMeekin now breaking down the middle. And this is going to be the perfect start. And what a start it's going to be for Jaden Nicarima inside 40 seconds. Catalan strike, the lethal break from Mike McMeekin. And Jaden Nicarima underneath the post as soon as he got the ball. There was no catching him. What a start from Catalan. And that's what you get from Nicarima. If you release him from the responsibility around that play the ball that he has when he plays nine. Look at him here on his bike. A big call to Mike McMeekin. And Mike McMeekin knows that the little fella's going to turn up, judges the pass perfectly, and a brilliant start for the home side. In those difficult conditions, you have to say it's a bad miss, isn't it? I think it's Liggy Sow that gets a hand on Mike McMeekin, but it's nowhere near enough, not effective, and it's a bad start for Hull FC. You can see just to the left behind the sticks, we're hearing almost 500 fans have made the long trip over to support the Black and Whites. Well, I wonder if it's going to be a long night. And there, of course, in your picture is a former uh, Black and White. Jordan Abdul at the moment on a season loan from Hull KR, but played over 50 games in the Hull SC jersey, but hoping to relaunch his career. Steve McNamara said when he knew he was available that it, it was a no-brainer that he, he'd bring him out here, get him out of Hull, get him into a new environment with new teammates and new opportunities, and he's grasped them so far, and he's kicked the goal, which gives Catalan a 6-0 lead already. We'll talk about Jordan Abdul, I'm sure, many, many times this afternoon, but Catalan Dragons, during the preparation for this game, would have talked about a big start, would have talked about being hard to handle. And when it's wet conditions like this, a slight change of direction, players don't trust the footwork, they end up lunging, leaping. And unfortunately for the black and whites, that was nowhere in near enough to stop Mike McMeekin. Well, defensively, it was poor, wasn't it? Here is Ikevalu, who only signed, of course, last May, already played in the grand final. Matikavalu and an important component in what Steve McNamara is trying to do. He's a big inclusion, Tom Davis, yeah. responsible for the momentum at the play of the ball. Lots of metres, that back five for Catalan in particular, get good metres and tend to capitalise on tries. Uh, Busquet, who knows, only one way, and that's forward. Yeah, Tom Davis has missed the last couple of games with a hamstring problem, comes back into the side, replacing Farwin Yaha. But this is an encouraging start, isn't it, from the Dragons. And here is Tarek Sims, arguably responsible for the hit of the season without so far. Without a doubt, without a doubt. You'd have to watch 100 games, and you'd still only see one of them, Stuart. Yeah. Um, poor old George Williams in the game here i thought he was good last week amongst some poor performers for the black and whites he looked busy he looked hungry to find the ball and as we saw Jaden nicarima capitalize on a broken on a line break he could probably put jack walker in that category but what hull fc can't do is create five chances and only convert one they have to convert them all yeah they've got to create the opportunity that's for sure Liggy Sow trying to find room on that far side. But also, it, it's, a, it's about getting the balance right, isn't it? We talked about a forward battle, but you've got to play as well. Yeah, the forward pack, even though they were those big numbers, can still promote the ball. As long as the pass is on, the receiver is expecting it, then it's a good pass. Tom Davis runs into Jaden Ockenbohr. 
Luke Brown was there as well. Here is Tom Johnston. Surprisingly, yet to score a try this season, Tom Johnston. 28 tries in 32 games for the Dragons. He's been prolific. Ooh. That's Sims again. Oh, the power of Tarek Sims. It's not shoulders, isn't it? They're like concrete. Doesn't matter whether he's tackling or carrying. But Danny Houghton still receiving treatments in back play. And that would be a huge blow for the black and whites and their captain had to leave. He's one of the workhorses of the team. It's Fian Fars, great ball inside. That's a superb tackle by Ockham Ball to deny Garcia. Otherwise, it was a try of the last. Abdul, across it goes, and just too high for Johnston and for Laguerre. But now what a tackle from Ockham Ball. Oh, now, that doesn't surprise me that they're going to focus heavily on kicks, Catalan Dragons. Hull FC conceded four tries from kicks last week. London really tested them and came up with the goods. And it'll be a, a place for fix-up for the black and whites, but a place for focus for the Catalan Dragons. There you can see one of the best in the business, Jordan Addo. And just to explain the replays, the video ref is having a look at the challenge here. That was Matty Russell, wasn't yeah. it? Oh, Tom There's Johnson. nothing wrong with that. No. Two players contesting the ball, one bumps into the other. Here's that big challenge from Tariq Sims, and you can see the head wobble from well, Danny Houghton. Well, he's OK, he's there. He's a dummy half as Hull FC looking for a way back, and that is a real relieving penalty. First penalty of the game given by Jack Smith. Six minutes in, 6 0 Catalan. Focus on discipline for Catalan Dragons. All that good work, got to the back end of the sets, put a good kick in, and then released the pressure with a little bit of ill discipline. Between of Arby. Good run again. That turn on SASA. They've missed him, haven't they? Too much ban. Hull have already lost a, a host of players this season, haven't they? To yeah. suspensions, SASA and. LA. And it's taken a lot of size away from that forward pack. SASA comes in here. The size and speed in the back line, and you can see the agility on Carlos Tumavavi, an example there. Houghton. It is SASA who gets the ball out. Kick goes forward from uh, Liggy Sound, would you believe? And you have to say that's a poor end to what looked like a promising set. On fourth tackle as well, Johnny yeah. Smith. Will give his players license if something is on, and you bet your bottom dollar you can do it, but you've got to come up with the right result. The raid continues to fall. In Perpignan and surrounding areas, for, for over a year they, they've been in drought conditions, and I don't feel sorry for him. <laughs> Not one little bit. Good, well, tackle. Way. Good tackle from Jordan Lane underneath. The ball and drives Garcia back. He is one of Super League's unsung heroes for me, Jordan Lane. Super League top tackler, by the way, coming into this into this match, coming into round four. 45 tackles he made against the Broncos last week. Fars with the kick down. Will be taken by Walker. That's a great kick, just holding up in play by Theo Farge. Look at the intensity of that chase as well. All players on the same script, and again, you can see a real focus on line speed. They're on the front foot, leaning forward in the sprint position. Ready yeah. to apply some pressure defensively. There was no way through for one winger, Lewis Martin. No way through for another there, and, and Matty Russell. Back on loan, short-term loan, along with Joe Bullock from Warrington. Bullock on the replacement bench for Hull. Now, here's the chance. SASA is through. Has he got support inside? He just couldn't get the ball out. Couldn't get the ball out. Tried to quit play the ball. Well, who's made a mess of that? Is it Hull FC or is it the Catalan Dragons? It looks like it's going to be a penalty. Well, it's a break from the big man, SASA. Oh, so he's, given, he's given the scrub instead. But look at this. It's great work, isn't it? Let's credit Tim Johnson, who put himself in between all those support runners. And then he makes a real mess of it. 
and the knock-on comes from Tom Johnston. But if he didn't step in, there was a certain try. That's what an impact. With Hull FC have only seen, is it 50 minutes from SASE so far? Yeah, well, he's shown more in those, what, nine minutes than he did in the 50 previous. Spot on, Barry. That's what they had missed from Herman SASA. Here is Smith, the match winner last weekend. And the ever-reliable Jordan Lane, best field position for Hull FC. You can see the try after 38 seconds. Houghton now. Little kick through from Walker. Is that another waste? And That's a looked, better kick, Stuart. Yeah, it is a better kick. It looked like it came off Nicarima. No try, but that may well be a dropout. We're just going to find out. The video referee is Aaron Moore. I think he will decide whether it's going to be a goal line dropout, Barry, or a tap on the 20. I think it was a better kick. I think it was a better chase, and ultimately they force Catalan Dragons into making a play for this. We'll see that this is the best angle to see who touches that ball last, or indeed if it is a knock-on, which I think it is. Liam Martin knocks the ball on, pushes it over the back line, and it's Catalan ball, but a better kick, a better end to the set. It either came off Martin or it came off the try scorer, Jaden Nicarima. It came off Martin, that. I'm certain of that. I think it's going to be a 20 metre restart. But no try, we knew that. And you are right, Barry McDermott. It is a 20 metre restart, but Hull at the moment are huffing and puffing, aren't they? They just need to be sharp, organised, and connected when they're at that end of the field. When you watch them against Hull FC, it wasn't quite as fluent as Tony Smith, the coach, would have wanted, and he certainly wouldn't want them to release the pressure valve by doing what Catalan did a couple of minutes ago, not getting back on side. It's those really small things in a game that when they start to stack up, start to make a big difference. But it's been better from Hull, hasn't it? Our Sky Sports Rugby League statistician Ian Proctor telling us that if you remember last week there were six home wins this week there's been five away wins are we going to have six away wins are you asking me or telling me Pikey? I'm querying I'm waiting for an answer no well listen you can't cannot back against Catalan Dragons at home but we'll see how this game unfolds Five. yeah a bit of a tough ask for it after that after 10 minutes I but we'll ask you a bit later on for sure, but Meekham, who made the first try, the Costa involved again, right in front of the black and white post. The Costa will find Abdul. Abdul now and Nicarima with a fantastic pass. And that is a walk-on for Matteo Laguerre. What a pass from Jaden Nicarima. He scored the first, he's made the second. And Matteo Laguerre making his first appearance of the season. Scores, Catalan second, and they lead 10-0. The recruitment for Catalan has been exceptional. When you think of the involvements of Tariq Sims in the early stages of this game and the two tries, sorry, the try and try assist from Jaden Nicarima. It's outstanding work, isn't it? He's playing at fullback, Nicarima, lays it on a plate. You can see from that angle, the eyes are in. He's looking at the ball, Carlos Trumavavi. He has no vision and no awareness on where Laguerre is, and that's why he glides into the hole. And it all came off the back of a penalty, Barry. You talked about discipline. What a buy he's been, though, Jaden Nicarima. That floating, roving role, he can join in, he can be a provider. He's obviously a run threat when he's got the ball. He was on the periphery when he was playing in the NRL. Never quite... Uh, broke through. I was actually looking at this. It, it, he actually made his debut, would you believe, his professional debut, playing for the Roosters at St Helens in the, the World, World Cup Challenge. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, but I know you're a big fan. So is Steve McNamara. He just felt that after last week, they did lack something. Well, they did, without a shadow of a doubt. 
And that's why Arthur Morg is on the bench, and that's why Jaden Nikarima is starting, and that's why Jordan Abdul is one of the best goal kickers in the business. 13 minutes on the clock, and Catalan lead 12 now. Well, this is ruthless, this is the execution of this play at the right end of the field. Compare that, although it was better from all FC at the back end of the set with a nice tempting kick. Well, the Dragons go all the way over to the other end of the field and convert a chance and opportunity. And he's put on a plate by Jaden Nikarima. Watch this, watch it. Already it's a tough ask, isn't it, for Hull FC? And when you think about what Hull FC have got to put up with, particularly in terms of the starting 13, but then when you think what they've got on the bench, more Segia, Sartai, who the black and white fans know extremely well, and Jordan Desiree, who I think is in career best form. Release Carlos! Tell you what, go on, you're okay, 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 you but here is Nick Arriba involved again, and Alaric da Costa. Again, the tackle by the busy Rocky Ball. But at the moment, Catalan in complete control. McMeekham. Good defence. Smith involved. Five release. Go five. Kick pressure. Last one. It's going this. Abdul, it'll always be a tricky kick if Abdul falls and it bounces over the head of Matty Russell. And much of the relief of the black and white goes out to play. 12 0, 15 minutes on the clock. And Halassi have had a couple of chances, but you can't really argue with the score. There are some small battles within the game. I'm sure Tony Smith will be saying to his team. If we manage to get a win on the last tackle, in other words, we slow it down to the pace that we want, then put some pressure on Jordan Abdul. Jordan Abdul still had all the time in the world to put that ball where he wanted. The chase wasn't great for Catalan. That's why it came to nothing. There's a penalty. The deferred to play the ball. Mike McMeekin just had a little tug on the leg of one of the Hull FC players. McIntosh it was. You can see there the rain hammering down in Perpignan. Hull changed things up a bit, by the way. In the last two or three years, they've been flying in on the day of the game and then flying straight home. They, they went yesterday to Perpignan, stayed overnight, hoping it would help their preparations. We shall see. Liggy Sound. Goal two. And Houghton. SASA involved. Here is Ockham Ball. The former Canterbury Bulldogs man, plenty of NRL experience. Houghton. Jordan Lane once again, shaping up, going for that try line. Can Hull finally find some joy? There's the kick through again, and Nicarima will come across and make sure. Was the ball gone loose? Has it gone loose or no? Well, it has gone loose. And I think it was Martin who got the ball down, but I suspect the Kareem had already touched it down. As he gets down to touch this ball, that's grounded at that point, and then there's a challenge here from Morgan Smith. That's why the crowd are getting on the back of the referee. I think they've had a look at it. Aaron Moore seems happy enough with it. The right decision, I think. I'm not so sure, Stuart. No. It was late. Let's go, John! It was late, the ball was grounded, but I think sometimes within the mind of a player, he doesn't know that, he can't afford to think like that. We're always brought up to say a player to the whistle. Correct. The key is there, maybe they thought that he, he didn't have complete control of the ball. Yeah. Tex Hoy has come on for Matty Russell for Hull FC. And I'm guessing that might be a, an injury that you would tactically swap. A back for a back, unless there's something going on physically. Yeah, absolutely. SASA gets the ball out, does well. Jordan Lake with a little kick through. Jordan Lake, can he get to the ball? And is that a try from New Brown? The ball came loose. Did Nicarima grab the ball? It looks like New Brown, they've been kicking and teasing and kicking and teasing that Catalan line. Have they got their just rewards? Is it a try for New Brown? Well, Everybody's brought the kicking license today, haven't they? I think Nicarima again has got down with pressure, again made that ball dead. 
but you can't fault the ambition of Jordan Lane. Oh, did he ground it? Well, it's a big call, isn't it? The, the off-field call from Jack I'd like Smith to see in the full. I'd like to see it in full speed. Well, there's two things here. First of all, did, did Nick Arima ground the ball? And then secondly, did Brown touch it while it was in play? I don't like watching things in slow motion, especially when you're looking at, at grounding while the body, uh, sorry, while the bo body of the ball is moving and, and twisting all over the place. That doesn't look like it's put down. The more I watch that, the more I think it's not grounded by Nick Arima. The key is, if it wasn't grounded by Nick Arima, was it grounded by the Manu Brown? Right, the fact that we're playing on here means that the video ref, Aaron Moore, has said that Jaden Nikarima hasn't grounded it. He's watching it in slow motion to see if there's downward pressure. But when you watch it that slow, it looks like it. Yep. Well, it looks like it is a try. It looks like he has managed to ground it. And this is a big decision, this. Ahal FC back in the game. Yes, they are. A try from New Brown. And it could be a vital try right under the post. And yeah, the black and white are right back in this. Yeah, you're right when you're ready, Darnell. He's an impressive Enzo, player, get isn't it? Enzo, get in, mate. Never stops working, New Brown. Scored last week against London. Always puts himself in the frame. And four has turned into six for the away team. That will give him some confidence. McIntosh adds the extra 12-6 it is. Yes, Again, SASC. Big offload, and then I like the spontaneity, I like the reaction of the whole FC players. And whether it's to your liking or not, it's six points to the away team, and it gets them a foothold in the game. And who was it with the kick? Yeah, that unsung hero, Jordan Lane, who's been getting more and more influential. Brilliant defensively, but certainly with ball in hand. Abdul kicks off, and we have got a game. 18 minutes gone, Catalan leading by 12 points to six. But I'll tell you what, despite, despite the weather, this is good, it's a cracker. Yeah, I, I think difficult conditions don't mean you shut up shop and turn it into five drives and a kick, not always. Sometimes that's applicable. But on games like this, shorten your passes up, sharpen your skill, and just try and create some opportunities. But it's certainly... Because of the conditions, it's certainly evident that it's a Hull FC tactic. Close to that line, you kick, you put the grubber kick in. And that's the fourth time they've done it in the first quarter. And they finally come up with some points. But it's a clear signal from Tony Smith how they want to play it because of the conditions close to the Caravan line. And offloads. Show your skill with offloads. Yep. Everybody is expecting a big man, SAS, here to get the ball away. Great kick from Morgan it's Smith. Oh, it's a knock oh, it's an uncom. Big mistake there. Yep, Nikarima. Nikarima's been so good. He had too much time, Stuart. The yeah. ball, that last bounce is the one that beats you, isn't it? On that one. What a good kick. Do you know what? What a, what a signing Morgan Smith could turn out to be. Unsung hero. Of course, they were forced into signing somebody because of the long-term injury to, to Jake Truman. Yeah. And Smith has turned out to be a, a cracking signing for Hull FC so far. And that partnership between Smith and Brown will only get better as the season goes on. And Stuart, you talked about the kicks and Tony Smith encouraging his side to kick. In greasy, difficult conditions, the kick along the floor, along the grass, that's the hardest to handle. Go on. Well, they're right back in it, and they are giving it a real go. Two. Move. Oh, the ball's been lost, I think. It looks like it has, and that's the mistake. It is a scrub, they have lost the ball. And that is Jordan Lane, who makes a rare error for LFC, just when the tails were up. Those are the little glitches that he has to resolve within his game, Jordan Lane. I've always been a fan of his, but he's been in and out of the side over the last probably 12 months. Now he's in, he's got to fix up those bits. Anybody can knock on, anybody can drop a ball in these conditions, but if your grip is right, 
you're doing everything you can to secure it. The whole injury crisis has just been has been awful, hasn't it, for the last 12 months or so, maybe more. They, they've signed Matthew Russell on loan from Warrington. And we mentioned he's had to go off the field, replaced by Tex Hoy. He has picked up a shoulder injury, and you've got to say, unlikely to return. Things going from bad to worse. He had such an influential part to play last week, didn't it? He's got a try from nowhere over on that right wing. And Hull FC trying to buy a bit more time at the play of the ball. Because of the size and power of Catalan Dragons, you're probably tempted to stay in half a second or a second longer trying to wrestle back the rook control. You can see big man Busquet got a good offload of away the last time he carried the ball forward and the referee says he stayed in too long lads yeah i think jordan lane wasn't it again second man in First, 22 minutes gone time flying catalan leading by 12 points to six to costa at dummy half great field position once more for the dragons farge and ben garcia Three, three, whole left. Influential, okay. inspirational. Three. Is Ben Garcia. Here's Navaret. Great play from Roman. Navaret. Again, good field position. Couple of tackles left in this set. Abdul with a short pass out. There is Sims looking for a way through to the line. Desperate hold defense on the last. Farge can't get the ball out. But that's really good defending from Hull FC. Probably not the best last tackle play for the Dragons, but nevertheless, Hoy, Ockenbohr and Tweeba Barbie doing what they have to do. They won't be too concerned about not getting to the kick, I don't believe, Catalan Dragons. They'll be happy with the fact that they started to dictate the speed of the play of the ball. All I've seen, think probably because they gave the penalty away, jumping off, which allowed a little bit of broken field for the Catalan Dragons. Talking about the offload, good now, sound, good not afraid to offload right in front of his own post. Dabby Houghton, 18th season. What that servant he's been. A rarity these days, barrier one club man. Great kick, he's had a 40 20, going to come back in. Picked up cleanly this time by Jaden Nicarima. Jaden Nicarima, probably pins his ears back, tucks the ball under his arm and tries to take on four defenders. If he uses that speed and agility in these conditions, there could be some reward for him there. Mistake by Ikevalu and Hull have it back. Well, they went to gamble. First knock on came from Ikevalu and it's going to be a scrum and Hull will get the ball back. And all the mistakes will actually add to the entertainment because of the weather. It has eased off quite a bit, the rain. But it's still slippery. And it's still 12-6 for Catalan with 15 minutes to half time. As defenders are starting to lower the targets now because of the way that the game is governed and the way that the game is played, if you target around the play of the ball, if you get that right, you can dislodge the ball. We saw it on that occasion. Catalan Dragons didn't have the right grip. The contact was good, and the reward was there for Hull FC. The rest was Julian Bousquet and Roman Madoret. Yeah, Chris Satai is on. Desiree. Desiree, yeah. Desiree, straight into the involvement there. That forward pack rotation is as good as any in the league for the Dragons. Smith. Good recognition there. As he, Tom Davis comes in, closes the play down. Yeah, there was nowhere for Tectoid to go, was there? Four, our square, Mike! Stay here, Chris Jordan, tackle four. McIntosh will play it to Morgan Smith. Inside it goes for SASA, who has been the showers in this first half. What a, a good player he's going to be for Hull. They go the short side. Smith with a diagonal kick, the pressure's on. Tarek Sims comes back. Well, the ball looks like it's gone out for... Uh, a goal line dropout, but there was a whole player in there looking to get his hand on the ball. Jack Smith saying no try. He'll send it upstairs. The video referee will have a look. But I suspect it's a no try. But we shall see. It's a beauty of a kick, isn't it? 
Everybody expecting it to go to Hull FC left, the corner flag as we're looking, but it goes back towards the sticks. And New Brown and Jordan Lane are expecting it coming back. It's a great kick from Smith, Barry. It's the timing of that run, isn't it? That's the important part, is New Brown, has he kept his discipline? The referee, video ref, seems happy enough with that. Well, hang on a minute, Hull reckon they scored. Garcia and Sims were split. No, no just no, couldn't get the ball down. You can't score it with your tricep. Great effort by New Brown. It really was. And it's knocked, it's knocked down by New I'm, Brown. I'm looking at you, Stuart. The puzzled look on your face. You're not sure what a tricep is, are you? Know, it's, on, it's on the back of your arm. Thank you, Barry. You used to have one. I've got loads of them. Just go back on that angle. Look at yours. Just go back on that angle. But it's a terrific kick, that's isn't it, from the black and white? Great effort again. Good ambition. It was a laboured chase back from Tariq Sims, who understandably showing a little bit of fatigue. This is the one. This is the one. Thank you. Well, the video referee is still going. having a look to see if he can score with his tricep. And yet, <laughs> it's missed there, and it goes back off Catalan. And then... Just I think the knock-on would be through. off New Brown, wouldn't it? As the ball's bouncing about. And then it's knocked down by New Brown. New Thank Brown you, knocks it out of the hand team. of Tom Johnson. No try. Jack, it's going to be a 20 restart. No eh? tries with triceps. Not on this occasion. Not, Not on my watch. watch. Not on my watch. 12 points for six. But again, good ambition. And I don't think that was made up. The very fact that both Jordan Lane and New Brown we're on the toes. Means they've had a look at that in the week. And it's another set play. And it's another kick. And it nearly produced another try. Chris Sate is about to get his first touch. Here he goes. Oh! Yeah, runs it to him oh, and SASA. Oh, oh. And you can and you that SASA will have a look at Chris Sate. He's got to do that, hasn't it? How many games? Oh, it's oh, here by Johnston on the fly. Johnston with a little kick forward. Who's there but Mikareva? Can he get over the line? I think he's lost the ball. So difficult, Stuart, in these conditions to handle a bouncing ball. Good kick inside from Tom Johnson. And it just... I think Danny Houghton, probably, if he doesn't get involved in that play, if he doesn't get involved and touch that ball, it may just be the slightest of touches. It bounces into the arm of Nick Arima, and he scores a try. Well, I'm interested that Tom Johnson didn't have a go himself with his pace to try and, to try and round Tectoy and score. SASA with a big shot on his opposite number. He'll have had that on his playbook. He'll have been waiting for that. When he comes on, I'm getting him first and I'm letting him know what he's in for. Chris Satai, of course, served the black and whites with great distinction. And everybody on the books at Hull FC will know what he's about. That sounds like you in your career. You've, you've been waiting for people to come on. He's mine. Correct. Correct, yes. 12-6, 13 minutes to go to half-time. Cracking game in Perpignan. Hull looking to go back-to-back. -back. Hull FC, by the way, haven't won in the south of France no, since 2019. But you may remember when they did, it was a memorable day. They put 50 points on the Dragons. It's with the crease. Last tackle. Move now. On the last, though. Jordan, still Jordan, pinned back inside their own half. Fuck and bore it once it was brought down. New Brown's the kick and Danny. And there's the kick from Brown downfield. The awkward Just bounce. Shoot, Danny, eventually taken by... By Tom Davis for Catalan. It was a scrappy end to the set for Hall FC. There was some confusion at the back end of the tackle. New Brown with a kick and hook, really. They've done well to wrestle themselves back into this game. Those tries from Catalan Dragons could have disheartened them. But, of course, the Black and Whites looking for back-to-back -back wins, looking to try and get kick-start this 2024 season off. Well, I'm impressed, I have to say, Barry, with Hull FC's enthusiasm and their desire.
to play for each other for sure. Ramble with good the kick, kick down. It's a great, great kick. kick. Picked up by Hoy behind his own line. And does well to stay the field of play, but that was classic Jordan Abdul. He knows what he's doing, does he? Puts it into the pocket. And there's a net, a blood and sand net around Tex Hoy. Penalty against Satai, the former home man. Relieving penalty. Chris Satai, 97 games he played for Hull FC in five years. Make no mistake, Hull are banging this game. On his fourth step. Tackle. It looked like they were going to bring Joe Bullock. Joe Bullock on, but Stan Tariq, square. Terry Smith has changed his mind. I think Artem Morg has, has come on as well, hasn't he, for, for Nick Arima. When Steve McNamara rolls his pack. Goal's going back, still zero. But it's play on. Wow. The word about it. Nick Arima, this is zero. a blow, is he may well have picked up a hamstring injury by him. Oh. Yeah, all very scrappy. The upshot is a penalty for the Catalan Dragons. Ten minutes to half time. We're going to the take the two because yeah, there's a lot of action going on on the sideline. We'll try and keep you up to date with what's happening. That Nicarima injury. You, you, you'd argue that that's a like for like swap with Atia Morgan, Jaden Nicarima, both low to the ground, both fast and elusive. So it won't weaken them too much. It may affect them later on in the game if they catch. A few more disturbances, be it yellow cards, red cards, injuries. They're in a decent position. I'm not too worried about Nicarima not making the field and having to be rotated. But it, there's some mistakes starting to creep in for both sides now, isn't there? Yeah. That's surprising. There's no doubt that Hull FC have been off the pace. The early stages of that game against London last week, they were way off the pace for large parts of that game. But they've turned up here with a different attitude and an intensity that was lacking last week. Well, this could be a key kick to make it a two-point game, but he's missed. Oh, I am surprised. Jordan Abdul, albeit from 35 yards, right in front of the post. Get the cogs turning, then. Exactly. The 20 drop out, Tex. So it stays 12-6. Yeah, we didn't expect that. But they're getting back. Drop out from, of course, the 20. The cost are at dummy half. Oh, a slip again. You can see that when players are looking to use footwork, looking to step and plant the foot, the grass is going from under them. Garcia now. Tweed of Harvey makes the tackle. He's good, isn't he, Ben Garcia? Yeah. You'd like a few more of them in your side. High shot. Now, do they try another two? I think they're going to carry on this time. Let's go, Jordan. Eight minutes to go to half time, and they're going to go for the try. Again, the correct decision. Yeah. I'm not sure. And obviously, we turn up, we've got a preconceived idea that Catalan Dragons, one of the favourites for the title, are going to dismantle the black and whites. I don't think this is going to go to plan. I'm not sure who's going to win yet. No. The quality is in the Catalan Dragons' ranks, but there's just something about the black and whites today. Well, not a bit of it, arguably. They may, they may be losing here, but arguably this is their best 40 minutes of the season. But could be in trouble! Oh. Tom Davis puts it down. It was the pass from Martin Moore, and you can see the frustration from Davis. Catches this, it's surely a try. Two things you don't see in games. Jordan Abdul miss a Lads, sitter. He's on. given away two points and left them out. Lads, get your numbers in. And then Tom Davis, who's always reliable. Well, I don't know what's going through his mind there. Time off, shot clock off. Shot clock he's off. had two weeks off. But he's a quality player. And would get that right nine times out of ten. It was a try. Catch the ball. It's a try. Yeah. That's a big moment. Five, six, Edward, 33 minutes on the clock. Ball. Too early, I'm sure, to say, well, it's a game changer, but it's going to play a big a big part in the result. We shall see. Tweeba Barbie for Hull FC. Liggy Sam back on. Chris Jordan! 
definitely think it's been their best 40 minutes. They, yeah. may, they may be trailing, but this yeah. has been a really good effort. I think we've seen a different tempo and intensity. Jack Ashworth, what a mixed game last week. Comes up with a fumble. And you can see Danny out. Look at the body language, look at the gestures. He's saying, hey, we've got time to defend. This is what our next job is. Don't worry about the mistake that we've made. Don't overanalyze it, overprocess it. it. Let's get on with our defense now. Tom Three. Davis is probably still overanalyzing it and still Three, processing five, it. Six, the rain has stopped, 12-6. Yes. Seven minutes to half time. Out. No tackle. Oh. Stand the one. We're hearing that Jaden Nicariba is actually walking around, so that hamstring problem may not be as serious. But another big hit! Ashworth on Satai! Wow, it was a big hit. Oh, he's rocked him. Yeah, I'm not wait, sure he knows wait, wait, where wait, he wait. is, Chris Satai. Well, that is going to have to go off for an HIA. That was a huge hit by Ashworth. Let's have a look at it here. Well, the referee may well have an opinion on this. You can see there's a... There's almost a ricochet, isn't there? You can see their head snap back from both players, which tells me that maybe that horrible, horrible phrase, head-on-head -head contact, both in terms of the damage it does and the outcome of it and the punishment of it. Chris Sartai with those eyebrows virtually touching the big frown on him. They're going to have to go off for, a, just, just for an HIA. To know, is it? But the call is now that Jack Smith is asking the video referee, Aaron Ball, whether there was any foul play. If you remember the head-on-head, -head, the accidental clash of heads which led to New Brown being sent off. This is nothing like, this is nothing like New Brown's head-on-head -head contact. Jack Ashworth has targeted a big man. He's zoned in on him. And I think he might be in trouble here. Let, let me just explain to you. It's head on head contact, and your ball to right. There's no mitigation in this one. He's not dipped, has it? Well, this is a big call. If there's no mitigation, he could be off here. Is it another controversial call? Or in 10 minutes, I'll, I'll tell you what, red. he's done very well there. Yeah. He can count himself extremely lucky. Head on head contact. However difficult it is, I have. Probably different views than most on this. It's very hard for Jack Ashworth to dip at the last fraction of a second, but in terms of his approach, it's always dangerous. Straight lines, hits hard, and if both heads are in the same vicinity, the same area, the way that the game is refereed now, there's always a high degree of danger attached to it. Well, Seguier has come on for Satai. He, he, he was all over the place, wasn't he? Chris Satai. Arta Moore taking over the goal-kicking duties. He's on for the eight injured Nicarima. But just to reiterate, that is completely different than the new brown one. Every man and his dog looked at that one and said, that is not a red, yellow or, or anything else. Even a penalty. This, this looks like the thing we want to get out of the game. But Arta Moore is successful with the kick, it's 14 points to six. There was a big call as to whether it was yellow or whether it was red. Of course, we have a similar call with a, a similar risk challenge. Mark Percival on Jack Orbegoy last night, yeah. against, yeah. against Salford. And so, you and I were different in our opinion. I thought that was a legitimate red. I don't... I don't know the referee had anywhere else to go under the laws and rules that were playing, and I think this was similar. You think that one was, was red? One was red and one was yellow. Jack Ashworth, apparently on the sideline, is very upset with the outcome of it. But unfortunately, we are where we are, as they say. Well, these are the, these are the, the incidents that we're going to have to talk about a lot. Aren't There's we? nuances everywhere. Every tackle, every challenge, every carry, 
is probably different in its own way. But the other thing, is, Barry, that and, and you've got to say, it's unfair on the officials, the referee and the video referee, is that it comes down to interpretation as well, because one referee and one video referee, they see it slightly different to another one, and that's just life, that's just the way it is. But it puts the pressure on the officials. I think fans want and ask for consistency. Players and coaches are the same, but you're right. You're never going to get consistency with human beings making human mistakes, human decisions. Yeah, you're right. That's the way it is. It is. As far as it was with the breakthrough, 14 points to six. Abdul it is. And ball for Davis. Davis goes for the line. Brilliant defence from Darnell McIntosh. Crucial tackle from the Hull FC player. Ikevalu now. But it's a set restart. Of course, Hull FC down to 12. Jack Ashworth in the sin bin. McMeekin with a long pass up, superbly taken by Garcia. McMeekin on his own, goes for the line. Fu Brown and who else but Danny Hampton making the tackle. The Costa down. Abdul, chance again. And it looks like. Laguerre. Oh, it's brilliant down. scramble defence, isn't it? Oh, ball. A number down, busted, scrambling all over the place. But on that occasion, Hull FC did enough to deny Tariq Sim. And Sims, we've already said, had a wonderful start to his Catalan Dragons career. That's a good kick. The ball's come down, and who's going to come off? And put behind by Dana McIntosh. But I think, yeah, I think there's, a, offside, there's an upside correct. somewhere. Offside. Catalan Dragons trying to put pressure at the end of their sets with that high kick, putting it on the head of the centre. The Cavallo judged to be offside. It's Tariq Sims, and here's the goal line defence from Hull FC. There is a lot of fight in this performance so far, 38, 39 minutes on the clock. Two, don't go in, well done, Mike! Go two. Look at how that was, here is... Howard. Three, me now, Jack Ashworth with ten minutes in the sin bin. Was it a yellow? Was it a red? You'll have to make your own minds up. The decision of the referee, the video referee, was a yellow. Here's Chex Hoy. Brought down by Desiree. On New Brown. Alex, you There's a penalty in back play. Late hit, Desiree. I think. Yeah. Uh, on Alex, New Brown. On New Brown. Yeah, to Costa it was, who was holding back New Brown. You just see that on the left of your screen. He did more than hold him back. He helped him with his feet, didn't he? Yeah. Time off. And he had more than enough time to pull out that. He just can't do that. We got rid of that last year. And just before that, Mathieu Laguerre went in for a challenge. Got his head in the wrong place. And got up gingerly. In the modern game, Stuart, you can't count on anything. You can't write the script because there's so many things that can and do go wrong. Sim bins, red cards, head injury assessment, assessments. How many plans does a coach have to have ready in his in his mind or set in his book? If this happens, that's my strategy. It looks like the centre is OK. Yeah. It's impossible to plan, though, isn't it, in this day and age? You've just got to be sharp as yeah. a coach and be able to think quickly under pressure okay. and make those decisions the correct ones. Just so quick, isn't it? Already lost Nicarima. Catalan Dragons with a hamstring injury. Matty Russell has gone off. His second game back in a whole shirt on loan from Warrington. He's got a shoulder injury. Big moment right at the end of the half to reduce the deficit once more to six points. Darnell McIntosh has he pushed that wide off the post? He has, and that's a disappointing kick from Darnell McIntosh. And it's a, a disappointing end to uh, the first half. We started the game in driving rain. Um, Catalan and Hull FC have served up some terrific entertainment. The Dragons scoring after 38 seconds through uh, Jaden Nicarima. A second try from Laguerre. New Brown was the man who got Hull FC on the board. Then we saw Jordan Abdul miss a kick. 
We saw Tom Davis knock on with the line begging, and then Jack Ashworth sent to the sin bin after a challenge on the former Hull star, Chris Satai. Was it yellow, was it red? It ended up being a yellow card, and then a penalty from Arthur Moore giving Catalan the lead at half-time by 14 points to six. French Super League on Sky Sports from the south of France. It's a busy weekend on Sky Sports and a busy weekend for us next weekend. Salford against Wigan, Sky Sports action Thursday night, then a huge clash always in as heavily league leads against Saints again on Sky Sports action. And reminding you all the games live on Sky Sports this year, busy weekend. Three games on Saturday, Hull FC against Lee, Huddersfield taking on Hull KR, and then Catalan Dragons back at home against the winless Castleford Tigers. And on Sunday, it's London against Warrington. Cracking first half at the start, Gilbert Brutus. The Catalan Dragons leading by 14 points to six. Hull FC have controversially lost Jack Ashworth to the sin bin. And a thoroughly enjoyable first 40 minutes, Barry McDermott. Well, less than a minute it took Catalan Dragons to get on that scoreboard, didn't it? It was a nice break from Mike McMinkin, the back rower, who brought the line and set Jaden Nicarima up for the first try. We'll take a look at the pictures now. Good start, you can see. Good communication. Just drops the big man off. Nice step. You feel certain, don't you, that Stabler was called offside. It looked like his arms were up. And it just opened the door for Mike McMeegan. Jaden Nicarima, to the delight of the fans, got the first try with one minute, 6-0. And Mike McMeekin, who's been playing middle more than he's been playing edge, but in his back row position, still shows in those old legs he's got some agility. And Jordan Abdul pulling strings, just gives time to Jaden Nicarima. Doesn't take it to the line, doesn't take, take time away. Jaden Nicarima, who left the field with a with a hamstring strain or pull, just puts Matteo Laguerre over. And then the whole FC managed to get themselves back into the game. He's been good. SASA with some big carries and some good offloads. And he just competes here in New Brown doesn't give up, doesn't assume that Jordan Lane will get there, or there is a knock-on, competes really hard, and he's quicker than Al Ricks de Costa to react to that ball. Here's the challenge, here's the contention. Was it red? Was it yellow? Or well, for Jack Ashworth, I think he's very fortunate here. He's head-on-head -head contact. Whatever your views are about it, that's what the game is trying to get rid of. And Jack Ashworth gets a yellow card. And it's 14 6 at half time. Yeah, there we have it. Catalan dominating possession, but certainly when Hull FC have had the ball, they've looked dangerous. And, and, the, and the tactic that they're using, the, the kicking towards the line, uh, is pretty good. And when you consider the conditions as well, 82% each completed set, but we have a game on in the south of France. Catalan, of course, looking to bounce back from their defeat against Leeds last weekend at Headingley. Hull FC looking for back-to-back -back victories after their success against London got them on the board. Cracking second half on the way from Perpignan. Super League live on Sky Sport from the south of France. The last game of the weekend. Can Hull FC make it six 
away wins in round four of the Super League. We shall see earlier today, Wigan putting 60 on London, and the champions have gone top of the Super League table. And confirming Wigan top of the table, three out of three. Saints losing their 100% record against Salford. St Helens, Warrington, Leeds and the Red Devils all on six points. But trouble at the bottom for Lee, Cass and London yet to win. Well, on Sky Sports, big weekend, some key matches to come on Super Sunday. Aston Villa against Spurs in the race for a Champions League spot on air at midday on Sky Sports Premier League. And then one of the matches that could well decide the Premier League season, Liverpool against Man City from Anfield, kick off a quarter to four again on Sky Sports Premier League. But here at the Stan Gilbert Brutus, 14 points to six it is to the Catalan Dragons. They'll ask you here and now, Barry McDermott, what is the key to winning this game? Well, for the Dragons, they just need to bring an element of control to the game, raise the levels of intensity and just tighten up that discipline. Easily fixable for the Dragons. I think this is their game to lose, but the stubbornness, the fight, the drive, of the black and whites have meant that if they can stop giving up cheap field position and keep playing the game in the right parts of the field, they're in with a real chance. This is going to be a really entertaining 40 minutes. Don't go anywhere. No, absolutely. Well, interesting, during half-time, I was having a, a quick look on social media about the Jack Ashworth incident with the tackle on Chris Satai. Satai has gone off for a head injury assessment. We'll have the, the result of that, I'm sure, at the start of the second half. Um, the question was, was it a yellow card or was it a red card for Jack Ashworth? And I've got to say, it's split. It was... Listen, I think he's a very, very lucky boy. If that was me and that referee, under today's rules, had held up a yellow card, I would have sprinted off that field before the yellow turned into a red. But it is a yellow, and they'll be without him for the first three minutes of the second half. And here he is, Danny Howe. How important has he been again? Top tackler for LSC in that first half. Um, we're expecting a bit more with ball in hand, aren't we? The rain has stopped, and there's no reason why we can't have a really good second 40 minutes but i agree with you i think it's catalans to lose but hull fc and tony smith will be infused by their performance so far we talked about danny houghton there's no doubt he's the spiritual leader hull fc but herman sasa i think by the very nature of him being on the field there's more belief in this black and white team they've got a big man who's making inroads leaving defenders scattered on the floor and that's only adding to the confidence of the black and white players. Which is its very presence, isn't it, as well? And that's what's going to be important for Hull FC. Can they come back? Can they win for the first time in the south of France since 2019? And the news from the sidelines is that the former Hull star, Chris Satai, has failed his HIA. He won't be coming back. No surprise. Well, that all adds to the validity of Hull SC within this game. If you think as well, they've got Big Joe Bullock still to get on the field. They've got some size, haven't they? So if they can get some field possession, as we've mentioned, if they can just sharpen up what they're doing with the ball, then they're in with a chance. Yeah, absolutely. But it's been good in the main from Hull FC, especially after the shock of conceding a try inside 40 seconds in the first half. That's a great offload, and Tweema Varley just couldn't hang on to it. Um, the Catalan Dragons seizing on the error, and all of a sudden, inside the first minute of the second half, Catalan, with Tom Johnston, are going to start an assault on that Hull FC line. What did I say? Don't give them cheap field position. The first thing they do is give Catalan Dragons cheap field position. You could see what New Brown was trying to do, but in the first minute of the second half, I'm not sure. 
Here is Desiree for the Catalan Dragons. One of three Catalan players simbined in that game against Leeds last week. Farge and Abdon, have they got room outside? They have, and here comes Johnston looking for the try line. Yet to score, Tom Johnston, this season. That's how close he was. Great scramble defence from the black and whites. Back it comes to Abdul. The pressure beginning to build once more on that Halassi line. The two men in the tackle, no surprise, Houghton and Lane. Abdul again, and Farge, the ball comes out of the back door, and it may well have been a Halassi hand in there. Was it McIntosh? But it is. And it's going to be another set. The Catalan, Lewis Martin, yeah. racing out of the line. Actually, it probably saved the try. They're doing it? enough, aren't they? It was magnificent over on the other side to prevent Tom Johnson from getting a try. The black and white shirts flooding over to help each other out. There's no shortage of commitment in defence from Tony Smith's side tonight. It's those decisions, those key decisions while they're in possession. Yeah, I've said shot clock off because all the numbers are here. But well, this bad. is a big moment in this match, you feel. Right at the start of the second half. Another try now, and it will be control for the Catalan Dragons. Abdul trying to set things going on that far side. Laguerre it was who was brought down. But Hull FC's defence yet again holding firm. There is Tarek Sims. What a good signing. He could prove to be one of these signings in 2024, you know, Tarek Sims. McMeekin, Farge. Well, that was high, I think, by Darnell McIntosh on Theo Farge. But Farge gets up. Um, I reckon Barry, he was falling to the ground. It's a, it's a penalty, nothing more. Yeah, we're just picking up on the referees, Mike. Hopefully you are at home. There's a rapid loss in height. As he catches the ball, he plants his foot, slips, and Carlos Trumavavi just clips him. Yep. No thought of two points, they want the try. Sims it was, gets up to Costa, now it's Farge. They've got room on this right-hand side if they can get the ball out. Ben Garcia going nowhere. Danny Houghton inevitably involved in the tackle. Along with Liggy Sow, they hear it, Theo Farge, and that's a brilliant that's intercept brilliant. by Lewis Martin. He read it again, and he caught it this time, and Hull FC have been under pressure for four minutes at the start of the second half, and kept the Dragons out. Well, they passed the first test in defence. Can you hold your nerve? Can you stick in defence? Move together! When you're Square under up. pressure, under siege, and the answer on that occasion was yes. Liggy Sow. Oh! Well, did the ball go well, to Well, listen, ground? he was offloading that ball, Liggy Sow, who should know better. He's looking for the offload at first. He's he looking the for ball. the offload, and he's lucky that Desiree has a little tug at that ball. His side have only just got possession back, and he's looking to offload the ball. You know what? That's a close call. I, I think he may have lost control of that ball in the tackle, to be honest with you. It doesn't matter, the referee thinks otherwise, and Hull have the ball on halfway. Jack Ashworth back on the field after his sin bidding, but he's going to have to be careful. Good hands on the far side, and here is Walker playing on the wing. Jack Walker, because of the injury to Matty Russell, Tex Hoy is on the field, and he is at full back. Six again, Stuart, so plenty of tackles to play with. Here is Houghton, and Ashworth, Newt Brown, Tex Hoy will be important as well. He will find a way into this line, you can be absolutely sure. Liggy Sow. Tackle three, it is. Ball go to the right again, that's a long pass out for Walker. Walker with a little kick through towards the line, and taken in the end by Tarek Sims. Was not a lot on there for Jack Walker, but what he has done is he's earned his side another set on the Catalan line. Well, that's a super result for Hull FC, and what an intelligent kick to curl it back in field and force Catalan Dragons to field it. I don't mind two full-backs on, and 
Jack Walker was in wonderful form last week, so if Tex Hoy and Jack Walker keep switching, keep swapping, keep rotating, and having that free reign, they're going to cause all manner of problems to the Dragons' defence. It also gives them another dimension, doesn't it? A bit quicker in transition. Taken by Hoy really well. Here is Ashworth now for Hull FC. Jack Ashworth. Move together, Catalan. Still only 28. It's his eighth club. Hull FC. Jack Ashworth, who, who won a Super League title with St Helens back in 2019. Square Jordan. Again, marshalling his troops. Chance now for young Nick Staveley. Highly rated by Tony Smith. Stavely gets up, plays the ball as quickly as he can. Not the best of passes. Houghton picking it up on the bounce. Is the room on the far side? Well, the ball, I think, may well have gone forward. Has it? Play on. It came off the Catalan player. And is that a try for Jack Walker? Big, big call here. Catalan claiming it was a knock on. Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? The video referee will make the call. Time off. Tackle three. Try or no try on the field. No try, mate. Just check from the first knock on where he touches him on the body and then if he's in an onside position to receive the ball. Closer on than this point. Closer in of an angle on that. Okay, it's past there. It's touched by Johnson. Looks to hit the head there to the Barbie. We just go this a bit of better angle. Okay, nice and slow, please. So it touches Johnson. And then it comes off the head. Come off the head. If we just go back on that, please. Go back on that, please. Go back. Go back. It's off Johnson, and then it, it hits the head of Carlos Tumavavi. If we go to the other angle to just check Jack Walker's on side, please. It hits the head, so it's play on that here, and it's behind him. Go for it to the ground, and the ball's grounded. Thank you. I'm happy I've seen the angles I need. I've made my decision. Wow, they say fortune favours the brave. And yeah, fortune cheers, does favour the brave. It comes off the head of Carlos Tweeba Barbie and Jack Walker. Look at that though, Stuart. Jack Walker is walking off the field. As he put the ball down, he turned around to his teammate and said, Hammy's gone. And the way he put that ball when he was scooping down, it's a delight to the black and whites. It's come at some cost. The bouncing ball fools the defenders as well. Play on. Play on. My instinct automatically was it's hit him in the head play on. You can just yeah, see him meters, limp like, as he puts the ball down, Jack two, Walker. A real shame. So more disruption, more shuffling around for Tony Smith's side. Cheers, Aaron. You need a bit of luck to win a game of rugby league. Yeah. And Lady Luck sitting on the shoulder of Hull FC Sorry, with that try. That it was a header. Yeah. And then it was a try. And it's 14-10, and this to reduce the gap to two points. McIntosh with a crucial kick. We've got the distance, and it's got the accuracy of 500 or so. Hull FC fans behind the post, away to the left, are absolutely delighted. A game-changer, and it came from a header. Sometimes you've got to ride your luck. The pass hit the hand of Johnson. We saw that on the replay. It hit Letet. And Jack Walker played on, carried on, and got himself a try. Well, that is a big moment, isn't it? And here is Joe Bullock seeing his first action also on low. We'll try and find out, by the way, what the injury is to Jack Walker, but they've already lost. I'm certain he said Hammy. Hammy's gone. Yeah, I'm certain he said Hammy. And when he scooped down... To put the ball down for the try, he limped his way through that. So we'll try and work out how Hull FC are shuffling the side around. Two points behind on the scoreboard under real adversity here. 
But my word, the black and whites are showing up this week, aren't they? Yeah. Brilliant performance. And they deserve to be in this game, and they deserve to be in with an opportunity to cause what would be a shot win. If that was no doubt at all, but they are meaning business inside the Catalan half of the field. How there to New Brown who hoists a high, high kick and it's taken well by Artem Morg. Approaching 50 minutes in the south of France, Catalan leading by 14 points to 12. Well, again, he's definitely in the balance now. So on 50 minutes, every mistake, every decision, all those processes you go through, do I pass it, do I hold it, do I go high, do I go low, there will be a severe consequence. And the video referee it was Aaron Moore. He was the one who called it. Um, just make out what he was saying at 14 points to 12. Go away, Square, Danny. Go five. Kick pressure. It's going high. Ball back to Abdul now. Again, he has too much time. It amazes me that the whole of Super League doesn't put three or four bodies in front of Jordan Abdul and make it difficult because we've seen. Throughout his career, he can do strange things to a rugby league ball, John and Abdul. Yeah. And it looks, it looks like Jaden Ockenbaugh has gone on the wing. I think he's gone in the centre. I think during his time as a Canterbury Bulldog, he played in the centres. And, and then I think McIntosh. Is it McIntosh has gone out on the wing? That'll be the third winger they've had on that right wing. Well, let's see. Good tackle. He's wrapped him back in. Goal five. Another well, play of the ball. Oh, Danny! Jack. Not the best. The kick is pretty good. It's taken by Arthur Moore. Right, cool heads here now for the Catalan Dragons. Hound, release him. Well, FC have got a real foothold in this game. So those pivotal players, those brain, those thinkers, the cerebral rugby league players now need to cool their minds down and think the way out of this situation another injury this time to the costa the costa the number nines in the game they're the players that get through the most amount of defensive work you can see he just gets his head in an awkward position S.A.S.A. well he does damage when he's carrying the ball He's got lovely late footwork, the big Samoan, got international caps for Samoa and New Zealand, and has made a huge difference to the way that Hull FC have performed in this game. And understandably, and quite correctly, he's going off to the sideline at Alrix de Costa. They're going to take a look at him. Well, Tony Smith will be absolutely delighted with the way that his team has, Just wait, Tom, has got themselves the field, Jack, entrenched in this game. It's a real challenge. Another shuffle here. Both sides you do need to work with those versatile players. You need a number of them in your squad, don't you? Bousquet has come back on, so that mean, means he will go into the, to the forward pack and Garcia, as you can see, will go into dummy half and play the role of a hooker. Well, they will have Mickey McLaurin back from that three-match band for the they game. They have got him back tonight, though, have they? They could do with no, him tonight. Absolutely. Against Castleford. Next Saturday, live on Sky Sport. Kick pressure. Garcia Outside. finds that's better pressure. Outside. And look yeah, at the difference that makes Danny from Danny Houghton. Doesn't actually get to Jordan Abdul, but rushes him and hurries him into catching it and kicking it. Go on, Marcus are in. Well, injuries so far. Nekarima hamstring. Chris Satai, HIA. Alric the Costa has gone off for a head assessment. Walker has. Jack Walker has injured his hamstring in scoring that try. He won't be back on. Matthew Russell's got a shoulder injury. He won't be back on. It's a tough old game. They're not one and two week injuries. We don't know the extent of them. Is that a 40 20? Yeah, it looks it. That could be a brilliant kick. If it's a hamstring tug or strain, that could be four to six weeks and then a shoulder. 
Well, that can be anything from weeks to months. What a kick that was, and what an opportunity this is. The bullet drives forward. Halassi trailing by two, but looking forward, or looking to try and go ahead for the first time. Herman Sasa, who played his part. Good old rough and tumble game. Stavely is pushed back, trying to play the ball quickly. Houghton once more. New Brown thinking about kicking, had to change his mind. Slips up the pass for Carlos Treba Barbi. Treba Barbi brought down by Farge and by Desiree. Coming up for 54 minutes at the Stan Shield Bear Brutus. Last tackle, last! Last one! Stavely and his goes to dummy halves this time. The ball goes back and New Brown puts the ball forward. Was that played at? It was played at, so it's another set for Hull FC on the Catalan line. Again, Lady Luck favouring the black and whites. Martin picks it up. Houghton. Always dangerous. SASA once more. Somebody needs to be following him. You can see him reversing. Step up Morgan, Smith and New Brown, what have you got lads? Well there is Smith, there is Brown, but it's a poor pass and it's intercepted. Now this could be trouble if Johnson can get away, but it was Ockenbohr who nearly caught him and then Houghton who does catch him. Nearly one end to the other, but great covering tackle from Ockenbohr, but here come Catalan. What a play, what a defensive play, what a transition from Johnson. Well, at one end of the field, Hull FC were threatening to hit the front for the first time. Now they're scrambling and desperately defending once more. I want to see a bit more from Theo Farge. You can see him there, head guard on, turning round, seeing what's available. I want to see him make things happen. Oh, it was a good pass, and here is Busquet gets the ball back for McMeekin. It went backwards. Here is Mike McMeekin. What's he going? To, which way is he going to go? Does offload the ball. Laguerre finds Tariq Sims. Herman away! Come on, Joe! Go five. The last one, and it's Farge who digs up a little kick. It didn't look to be the best, and that's a really good no. take. No, you'd be disappointed he with that. He has been disappointing, hasn't yeah. he, Farge, on his 250th career appearance, and now it's a penalty to Hull FC. Yeah, and, and that's a frustrated player, I think, as well. He hasn't managed to establish himself within the team. I'm not talking about the dressing room, I'm not talking about whether players respect him, of course they do. Just hasn't found his place within the patterns of play. Here's Tom Johnson, snatches the ball. And didn't he do well here to evade defenders? He could have been tempted to find an offload, but it's like a bowling ball going from defender to defender and just releases all that pressure for his side. Yeah, it was a Important challenge for Mock and Ball, but that's a poor pass. And now here is Theo Fars in the right place at the right time. And having done all the right things, they get it wrong. And Catalan have it back now with Tom Davis. Tails are up, brought down by Smith. But Garcia, who will be involved in everything that they do. Navarrete, two yards away from the line. Another brilliant tackle from Houghton, but he held on too long. It's six again. Farge looking to dip under the tackle. Ashworth brings him down. Abdul, that's a good pass for Artem Moore. Moore kicks out of one, gets out of another. Has Artem Moore gone over? That is a special try, is it, from Artem Moore? He reckons he scored. Catalan reckons he scored. The referee, Jack Smith, thinks that Morg has touched down for an absolutely crucial try. It's another call for the video referee, Aaron Moore. But that was superb from Artem Morg. Well, try to tackle him. You've got absolutely no chance. He can see the white line. He knows it's there for the taking. And with determination and grit, Ducks, bobs, weaves his way forward. And out muscles far bigger players. And his instinct to get to the line, well, is it enough? The video referee, Aaron Moore. He's having a good look at it. He's happy with the grounding. 
Well, the referee was two yards away. It looks like he got it ball. He down sent it up as a try. Yeah, and I tend to think when the referee Jack Smith, who's in the best position, we can't see the replays from our cameras because of Jack Smith and his call. And you can see disappointment there on New Brown. This is a try. Yeah, and it's a big score because just two or three minutes ago, Hull FC were threatening to go ahead for the very first time. But that's the first points of the second half for the Catalan Dragons. And he has it in his locker to do things like that, Artem Morgan. Second try of the season. And the lead now back to six with the kick to come. Catalan leading 14-12. Good sides, punish mistakes. And when Hull FC made a mistake coming away from their own line, first on the ball was Theo Farge. And then a couple of a couple of tackles later, a couple of little probing runs by the Catalan Dragons. An early pass yeah. from Jordan Abdul lets that man have a go. Go on, son, do your best. Well, this to make it a two-score game. Artem Morg, and up go the flags. That's a big two minutes from the little man Morg. And it means that Catalan now lead by 20 points to 12. There's the mistake. You can see a willingness to work and a competitiveness from Theo Farge. He dives on the ball and look at this. That's magnificent from the replacement. Probably with a little point to prove to his coach. Don't leave me on the bench again, please. Yeah, absolutely. And it was after the defeat by Leeds that Steve McNamara decided it was time to, to drop Artem Morgan to start with Jaden Nicarima. And of course, Nicarima started amazingly with that try after 38 seconds. But 20 points to 12 approaching the hour, and Hull FC have got to do it all again, Barry. Within the pattern of the game, you'd say that for the third quarter of this game, from half time onwards, Hull FC have been right in it, haven't they? They've been really testing and challenging their opponents. But they made a mistake. They couldn't defend that mistake. And then the Catalan Dragons do what they do well, which is punish their opposition. But look at that clock. There is still a full quarter of this game to go. Farge with a kick down field. That's a good kick from Farge. And it put the pressure on Lewis Martin right in the corner and there's the chase and look where Hull FC are starting their set five yards from their own try line the momentum of the game has just it's just started to edge what a shot Garcia it was oh my word he's checking his jaw isn't he that was Ben wow. Garcia that was a whack and a half a tough old game. Both sides have suffered key injuries in this match. I'm just trying to look at the body language of the black and whites. Fourth tackle, 40 20 attempt. Uh, it just, just shows out Gary Hall. Hall. But what a fantastic play. Watch Here this. Holy moly. That's at the ball. So the bounce of the ball is from the shoulder of Ben Garcia. Be careful. It looks legal to me, but I bet it feels horrible. Well, Lewis Martin, the 19-year-old starlet, his fourth consecutive start. Let's go, Terry, play your ball! Go! And he knows he's in a game, and he knows he's been in a game. But I hope the other players next to him still feel it's only eight points on the scoreboard. I hope they still feel that they're in this game and they don't think, well, that's enough from us. We've Put up a little bit of resistance. We've got ourselves a little bit of pride back from the opening three games of the Super League season so far. I know they got that win last week, but as I said at the beginning, many people believe that was London's game. That's clear. Abdul involved once more. Off the ball, now. Jordan Abdul has found a home. Well, Alric de Costa, this is good news for the Catalan Dragons. The hooker has passed his HIA, so he can come back on the field. Abdul and Moore rolls in along the ground, putting pressure, well taken by Tex Hoy. That was Garcia, Stuart. Farge, I'll tell you what, Farge, for all he hasn't been that good with ball in hand defensively, 
got. I think he's always yeah. been one of the best defensive sevens in the competition. You just need those combinations to be right. Whatever format it takes, you want six, seven, and nine. Everybody has to bring something else to the party. And for me, a number seven's got to be more than a good defender. You've got to game control it in Jordan Abdul. He's got to run a bit more, get his hands on the ball and have an influence, more of an influence in the game, Theo Farge. You make a good point. It's all about stamping his authority, his mark on the team. 40! Morgan! That's another good kick downfield. Um, it's pushing Artem Moore right back towards his own line. 18 minutes to go. Oh, wow. Yeah. He looked tired, didn't he? Artie Mark didn't start the game, came off the bench. Look at his body language there, on his haunches, breathing in, trying to get some air back into the lungs. That's where you need to spread the workload. Tom Davis tries to just lighten the load for some of those bigger players. A pass like that. In a game situation like this was a... A heart in the mouth time, certainly for the coach. Just an indication Bamara. to me how yeah. tired and how fatigued so that player specifically might be. And for the Catalan Dragons, they'll be trying to find some energy. As I said many times, it's a game of energy. It's, at its very essence, rugby league is a game of energy. Because you make those decisions when you're mentally and physically tired and fatigued, you make the wrong ones. Good take from Hoy. But again, they've got a long way to go. They got back to 14 12. The clock is ticking, 16 minutes to go. Again, Farge, strong in defence. The rig down Jordan Lane. They need a clean set here, Hull FC. A clean set, a good kick, and some decent field position. Move together, Ruben. Tackle four, stay. Go. Well, there's been speculation this may well be Danny Houghton's last season in a black and white shirt. We shall see. The boy has still got it, hasn't he? He still has that, that engine that keeps going and going and going. New Brown it is with the kick. He did have time to get the kick away, but it was an easy take in the end for Artem Moore. And here is Tom Davis. Now, can they try and force Catalan back, force the mistake? They can keep in this arm wrestle, Hull FC. We know one thing about Catalan Dragons, they will force the issue, won't they? They play to win, they don't play to defend a lead. They eventually bring Roman Navarrete to the ground. Strong, strong prop forwards, aren't they? Busquets and Navarrete. Abdul trying to get the ball away. Tarek Sims, the penalty there, Jordan Abdul hit late again. Discipline. I wrote on my notes at half time stop giving cheap field position away, whether it's mistakes with the ball, penalties, or just lapses in concentration like it was on that occasion. Well, 15 minutes to go, and again, Halassi are going to be up against it. You feel one more try here, Barry, and that could be that. But the counter-argument is defend this set of six, stay in the game, and put some pressure, put some put some pressure back down the other end of the field on the Catalan Dragons. Abdul and Bousquet, what a player he's been. Made his debut for the Dragons in 2012, another of the, the one club men in the Dragons' ranks. The other workhorse, Mike McMeekin. Garcia, now here is Farge, looking to, to conjure up a Bousquet going for the line. Julian Bousquet, appearance number 259, he'd love to, to celebrate with a try, and there still could be one as Johnson finds room on the far side, but great defence once more, and puts it to touch. defence. McIntosh, Tweema Varvey, snub out the threat from Tom Johnson. You know what that is? That's belief. Belief in one another, belief in your defensive system, but you can have as many defensive systems as you want. If you haven't got the desire to work for your teammate, everything breaks down. Full credit to Hull FC. I know they're behind on the scoreboard, but for me, this is the best performance of 2024. Without a doubt.
without a shadow of a doubt. As you alluded to, and I think they'll be the first to admit in the end, they, they rode their luck and they were lucky to beat the London Broncos last weekend. But this has been a performance made of endeavour, enthusiasm, working for each other. And with eight points between the two sides, there's still 13 minutes to go. Yeah, he's played the ball. Good. They have to believe that they're still very much in this game. And nearly an offload there by New no Brown. Plays it as quickly play as he can. Liggy Sound so tries to get the offload Stand off. Stand and I think he only did Stand was pass it straight Stand towards the Catalan player. It's pounced on by Navarrete. And that is an absolute coach killer. That is a big error as they were coming out from their own line. It's another opportunity handed, isn't it, to the Catalan Dragons? It's been a real battle, hasn't it? It's been a real war of attrition. There's been far too many mistakes. The purists won't like it, but it's been a battle of will and desire. Busquet dragged down by Urban SASA, back on for LFC. Here is Abdul now looking for a way through. That's a run-around move, and Farge will kick it towards the corner, looking for Tom Davis, and well done, young man. Brilliant defence from Lewis Martin to tap the ball away. Um, although, Catalan will get the ball back. He watched it and watched it I'll tell you what, he's done, he's done so well. He's going backwards, he's going up sideways, reversing back, taps it away with one at hand. His heart would have been in his mouth because Tom Davis doesn't get those wrong too often. He knocks it over the sideline, so there's more possession for the Catalan Dragons. No tackle. 10, 11 minutes to go. How much is left in the tank of Hull FC yet? We seem to have been looking down this end of the field an awful lot over the last 20, 25 minutes or so. McMeekin right in front of the post. Ben Garcia at dummy half. They go to the short side for Theo Farge. Farge with a long pass out for Tom Davis. And Theo Farge does make his mark with a classic pass. And it's a classic finish for Tom Davis. But we've been asking for more from Theo Farge with ball in hand. He has delivered. And that try from Tom Davis may just have won this game for the Catalan Dragons. That's what he can do. Ball in hand, decisions to make, runners to choose from. There's been a lot of punishing runs from the big men, which creates space. You can see we commented on the bravery and courage of Lewis Martin. The last attempt that Catalan Dragons had near the try line, he managed to bat it over the sideline, but he's in too tight. He has to come in, try to shut the play down. Tom Davis holds his width. A look at the way, look at the accuracy. Perfect from Theo Farge. Well, that was the Theo Farge yeah. that he oh, produced when he was star of the show at St Helens. Of course, he had a he had a, a dreadfully unlucky two yeah, years no, with the Huddersfield Giants through injury. But as Farge's influence on proceedings yeah, when he was in a Saints jersey, and that was classic Farge, it really was. Okay, 24 well, points okay. to 12. And Artem Borg with a kick from the touchline, which would make it a three-score game. But Hull FC, I'm sure Tony Smith will be absolutely Thank you, Bob. delighted with what he's seen of his team, even if it is going to be in defeat. They're without 12 players through injury and suspension. Morg off the touchline, drifts it beautifully over the post. What a kick from Arthur Morg. He had to settle for a place on the sub bench after Steve McNamara preferred Jaden Nicarima at fullback. But since he's come on after Nicarima's injury, he has made his mark. 26 points to 12, and you have to say it's unlikely there's any way back for Hull FC. Class from some classy players. And that conversion from Artie Morg just nudges them a little bit further on the scoreboard. Doesn't get any easier in Super League. There's a tough schedule coming up for both teams. But credit the contest. 
that you've made contact with him. He lands Hull FC still trying, lands trying to get point. the ball back. Jordan Lane here is what Catalan Dragons have got yeah, coming up. Cass Warrington, look at that Saint yeah. at home. Hull KR at home. And then Lee Leopards, who went down to the Rhinos in the last of that five match sequence. Yeah, we're good. Tap, go. Well, Hull FC. Look at that, Lee at home, then the Derby oh, over Easter against KR, now. Huddersfield at home, Saints away, Leeds at home. Every week's a tough week, if that was no doubt. Lee will go to Hull next weekend, still looking for their first win. But even in defeat, which it looks like it's going to be, Hull must believe and must take this performance forward. Seven minutes to go. Sims trying to get the pass out there to Mike McMeekin, but down it goes. There's a hand in, Stuart, from a, from a black and white defender. Tariq Sim just gives him a high five, doesn't it? Tony Smith, Jack Walker with that hamstring injury. Simon Griggs on the sideline will be happy with the character that the shown the black and whites maybe not the smarts maybe they haven't helped themselves in certain situations but they've made the home side work hard and it's been a few key individual performers that have brought them back into the four back into the to the light on the scoreboard but they've had to work hard well i would suggest it's a penalty high tackle i think there by yeah, young take two here, wouldn't you yeah absolutely slow yeah. the game down but Tony Smith will be proud. And it's so an improvement be. for me. It's yeah. an improvement. Steve McNamara will probably look at elements of this game and think, boys, we can be better in that. But we've come up against a strong, determined, resilient team. Dragons going for the six. I don't know if it was the call from Steve McNamara or Ben Garcia on the field, but they weren't interested in the two points. They must feel that Hull FC are rocking. Here is Garcia on the short side. Abdul. Well, Ikevalu there going for the line. At the end, he got that close. He was held up over the line. Uh, Matt Ikevalu, he was that close. Six minutes and counting. The Catalan Dragons are closing in or returning to the winner's circle. Abdul and Moore. Tom Johnson would love to get his name on the score sheet. Big because challenge, he hasn't. Big challenge. Hasn't he been good, Artie Morg, since he's come off, off the bench? Had a growing influence on the game. There's been a number of forwards, had to step up, do some hard work, roll the sleeves up, Ben Garcia at the back, playing out of position. But Artie Morg, three from three, off the kicking tee, a try. We'll be asking Barry to name his player of the match soon as Garcia goes on his own from... Dummy half looking for a way through, but it was a six again. So once more, Hull, their own worst enemies, right on their own try line. Offload for Farge and now Morg. Just over 9,000 in the stand. Shield by Brutus. Another good crowd, considering. Good kickoff time, it was absolutely throwing it down, no, wasn't it? Go for Seguier, right on the line. Last tackle, Garcia then. Back it goes for Abdul, and the kick will go towards the corner, and it's well taken. I'll tell you what, he's done really well for me today, Darnell McIntosh. He's been putting a big, big stint. Yes, he has. There's there's been a lot of physicality to this game. A big challenge from Romain Navarrete. Darnell McIntosh get no, gets no congratulations from the opposition. Does well to pouch the ball. Does well to see, secure possession. And then Romain Navarrete shuts that door, slams it in his face. So four minutes to go. You can see on the bottom of the screen all that's coming up next week. Live on Sky Sports, all six games live across the Sky Sports network. 
who is the player of the match. Well, it has been a war of attrition, in, and it, it's been in no small part to players like Artie Moore. I think at phases at times, Jordan, Abdul and Theo Farge have influenced the game, but it's been won and lost in the forwards. Ben Garcia for me, he's the Betfred player of the match for the way that he stood up, the way that he's defended, and the way that he consistently puts team first, and he has done this evening. Yeah, game number 2-2-2, two, two, two. yet another of those Catalan one club men. Garcia, well, that's a mistake, all getting very scrappy at the end. Ben Garcia, I said it earlier in the game, didn't I? Influential and inspirational, and that's what he's been again. Well, I talked about Danny Houghton being the spiritual leader for his side. Well, I think Ben Garcia is the same. He was the captain's armband. He's front and centre when they lose. He takes responsibility for those below par performances. And this evening, he's contributed significantly to the graph that they've had to put in. Well, I see we'll take a lot from this. You look at who they've got out, the likes of Sutcliffe, he'll be back, Truman, Pele, Fash, Cater, Tyndall, Scott, Jack Brown, to name but a few. They've got a lot of players to come back. A player that made a big difference is, is Herman Essay. Essay. If Pele can have the same impact in the right direction, then I'm sure the black and white's fortunes will start to turn a little bit. Here is Essay, Essay. We got, we got a little bit of attention from Romain Navarrete on the floor, though. Head-to-head -head -head contact. And then he lost the possession. Who's going to come up with the, the ball? The second one off high is a knock-on. The second one off high is a knock-on. So, scrum down, Catalan ball, last minute or so. He's still looking SAS, he isn't he? Is, yeah. He is. And Navarrete. Yeah. All fair in love Well, listen, Barry. listen, when you're in the clinch, when you're trying to complete the tackle, you will put a little bit of pressure on your opponent. It's getting tight, getting the clinch, but on that occasion, I felt it. Herman S.A. S.A. certainly felt it. Yeah, good words from Jack Smith. I think of the two players there, Romain Navarrete, he's very relieved with the words of the referee. We don't want you two I don't want you together. two together. I think he's probably said, OK, I'll go, I'll move away from this dangerous position. He's a big man, isn't he? 18 stone, Herman S.A. S.A. He's put a big stint in today. Well done, you! It is. It's a glimpse, really. Two. Play the ball! It's a what's to come. This season. Here is Desiree. Approaching the last minute. Watch him coming in. LFC. The uh, long wait for a win in the south of France is going to go on 2019, the last time they managed it. And Catalan back to winning ways after their defeat against the lead Rhinos. And Hemingway. Oh, I'm sure Catalan will fancy it again Five. next Saturday back at home against Five. the winless Castleford Tigers. Just happy to be caught in possession. Run the clock down. 26 points to 12. And <laughs> it's going to be a case of job done. But Tariq Sims just yeah. having a little fun oh, at yeah. the end. A little, little bit of old bull, young bull there, just nudges the, the ball over to the side, killing another couple of seconds. It's been brutal at times, hasn't it? Tackle two, wait here. Wait, go two. And I think on balance, although there's credit in defeat for all FC, Catalan Dragons have been better in the big moments, and they deserve this win. Well, that could be it, and that is it. A big win in the end for the Catalan Dragons. And that'll please Steve McNamara after their defeat at Hemingley. But what an effort from Hull FC. They have given it absolutely everything. And they got back to within two points at the start of the second half with a try for Jack Walker. But they've been pegged back.